Fabulous Swift students, it's Professor Gallagher, and let me ask you, are you ready to get framed? Well, in this lesson, we're going to introduce the frame modifier so that we can keep images the same size. And I'll also show you several ways to use code completion to add parameters to a statement, and we'll learn about using the empty string to show a text view with no visible string and an image view with no visible image. Let the hacking begin! Now, before we get to the frame modifier, let me issue a challenge, and this will give us a great example that we can apply the frame modifier to. Now, this challenge is the image switcher challenge, and what I'd like you to do is to modify the code for the great app that we completed at the end of our last lesson. Now, when the user taps the awesome button, not only should the text change to awesome, the image view should also change, showing the image with the system name sunglasses.fill. And when the great button is pressed, after you've updated the text view to show great, Update the image view so that it shows the image with the system name sun.max. The animation shows how this works. Pause now if you don't want a hint, and you might not need one. But if you want a hint, well, here comes the hint. Again, pause if you don't want it. The hint is you're going to need another variable to hold the string to use in the image view. So why don't you call this variable image name? You can really use any valid Swift variable name, but since I'm going to use image name, if you want your code to match mine, you should use image name too. Note that the N in image name is capitalized, lower camel case style. So why don't you give this a shot? Pause if you need to. Try your best. I bet you can do it. Resume after you've given this a shot, and let's compare answers. So notice in our current code, the system name for our current image, the Swift, gets its name from this string literal entered right in here. But to vary the system name, instead of entering the string in here, we can use a variable. Now we'll create it right under our message variable. I'd suggested that we call this image name, so we'll say at state private var image name. And we'll initially set this equal to the string Swift, all lowercase letters. And now we can replace the string Swift in our image view with our new variable image name. Code completion knows this exists. Nice. You want to make sure you get the capitalization the same. Otherwise, you're not referring to the initial variable and you'll get an error. Now down here in the action closure for the awesome button, after we set the message variable equal to the string awesome, we'll add a new line of code setting the image name variable equal to the string sunglasses.fill. And in the action closure for the great button, we'll add a line to set the image name variable equal to the string sun.max. And now we can try this out. The code initializes the image name variable to Swift. That's why we see the Swift in here. But when we click the awesome button, image name is set equal to sunglasses.fill. We see those sunnies in here. And when we click on great, image name is set to sun.max. We got the shine and happy sun. That's appropriate because you're brilliant and your Swifty future is looking bright. Now, the next thing I want to point out is as we click on the two different buttons, notice that the sizes of the images are different. The sun is taller than the sunglasses. Now, because the image height varies, the text is showing up in different locations on our app. Now, what if we wanted these two images to take up the same amount of space? That would be good because then the text wouldn't jump up and down. Well, we can make the images a fixed size by adding a frame modifier below the image, like this. Let's click at the end of the last modifier below the image. That's our dot foreground style modifier. And we'll press return to add a new line. And we'll type dot frame. And we see a bunch of options. And this first one with width and height and alignment says, positions this view within an invisible frame with the specified size. That's what we want. When we enter a width and a height, the image will be squeezed into an invisible frame of that size. So regardless of the height of the image itself, if we set the frame height, for example, to 250, the tall image and the small image are going to be forced into that invisible frame that's 250 points high. That'll keep the text view that shows up below this in the same position in our app, regardless of which image is showing. Now, before we press return, notice width, height, and alignment are all italicized. We'd mentioned in an earlier lesson that when we see the parameters italicized like this, they're optional. So if I do press return here, none of those parameters, the optional ones, will show up. That means if I want to use width and height, I'll have to type width, colon, and then provide a width, comma, height, colon, and provide a height. 
and I can do this. Let's press return. Ooh, and we see something unexpected. Xcode also issues this yellow warning that frame with open and close parens and no parameters inside of it is being deprecated. Now what this means is that Apple has decided to eliminate the option of using frame without any parameters between parens in future versions of Swift UI. So you're not gonna be able to use this statement at some point in the future. Now Apple usually gives us a couple of operating system cycles before getting rid of that. It gives developers time to change their code, but since this option is going away, we shouldn't be using frame with nothing between the parentheses. So let's highlight this frame modifier, including the dot, and delete it. And we'll type dot frame again. And now I want you to notice a few things. First, notice that there's an open arrow character that's called the right chevron. It looks like a greater than symbol at the far right of the frame line. Now you can press the right arrow key on your keyboard to expand this, do it now, and it shows you a bunch of options. This lists all the possible parameter combinations, so you can highlight the one that you want, like this one here, width and height. Press return, and now both of those parameters are entered between the parentheses, including their attributes title and a comma in between them. Xcode puts 100 in here as the default value, but we can type over this, I'll put in 300, then tab over to height, enter 300 here, the image resizes, click awesome, note where the text view is, now click great, and the text view is in the same place. So see that, regardless of which button we're clicking and which image is being shown, the height of that image is fixed at 300 points, so the text view shown below it is always in the same place too. Cool. But wait, there's more. Now let's delete the frame modifier and retype dot frame once again. And I want you to notice this line down here. Code completion says, press escalator icon, U-turn icon to insert all parameters. Now the escalator icon here is actually the option key. If you look on your keyboard, you'll see this symbol on the option key. So if you hold down the option key, now we see the parameters are becoming highlighted. They're all in bold. So if I hold down the option key and I press return right now, the U-turn is supposed to represent the return key, we see all three parameters are entered. So now I can enter values again, 250 over width, tab, 250 for height, and I don't wanna work with the alignment. There are a few things to know about alignment. We'll describe that in a future lesson, but since I'm not using alignment, I can delete this. If you do delete alignment, make sure you delete the comment that comes before it too. And we see this works really well. But finally, I wanna show you the technique that I usually use when I work with code completion and I want it to enter particular parameters. So first delete the frame modifier again, and then enter dot, and let's start typing frame. And in fact, we'll just type in FRA. Now notice what Xcode shows as we type in. Every usable option that includes the letters FRA in that order is highlighted in bold. Now I'm gonna follow this by typing with no additional space, WI for width, and whoa, WI is now highlighted in bold, and I only see those options that have FRA and WI in them. Cool. Now if I want to add the height parameter, I can also type in, again, no spaces needed, HE for height. And look at that. I see that Xcode has already bold-faced or highlighted FRA for frame, WI for the width parameter, and HE for the height parameter. Now notice that the alignment is not highlighted because I haven't typed in any letters that match with the parameter named alignment. So with this first frame line highlighted, press return, Xcode adds the width and the height parameters, those two that were highlighted in the code, but it didn't add the alignment parameter because that wasn't highlighted. I didn't enter any characters for the word alignment. Very handy. So I can set the width to 300, tab, set the height to 300, try this out, and it works wonderfully. Now, the one last thing I want to show you in this lesson, if I wanted to eliminate the text and the image when the app first runs so that I have nothing in the text and I'm not showing an image, I can simply initialize the message in the image name variables to what's called the empty string. Now, the empty string is simply an open double quote, closed double quote with nothing inside of it. So let's try that out. I'll replace I am a programmer with two double quotes back to back, and I'll also replace the Swift with the empty string, again, two double quotes, and we see there's nothing in text, there's nothing in the image, but click great and you get your sun and click awesome and you get your sunglasses. 
Fantastic. So in this brief lesson, we tackled the image switcher challenge. We learned about the frame modifier, but we also learned how to recognize if a value in code completion has multiple parameters. And we showed that we can reveal the possible combinations of those parameters by using the arrow key on the keyboard. We can also have Xcode enter all the parameters by typing option return or we can partially type the name of the command and any parameters that we want to use. And when we press return, Xcode will include those parameters that we partially typed. We also learned how to set a string variable to an empty string, and we used that so that our text view and our image view didn't show anything when the app first started running. Nice. Now in our next lesson, I think you're ready to apply what you've learned to develop your own app. Get ready for another challenge. I know you're up for it. Let us continue to hack.